If you're looking for great quality outdoor gear, check out thegreatnorthapparel.com. They do men and women's t-shirts, coats, tank tops and more. They use recyclable materials and part of that profit goes towards the environment, so you are contributing to a good cause with your purchase. Use the discount code TRAINING at the checkout and get 30% off. I'll add a link to the description. Episode 22 of Training Talks and Truth. This episode is called Couch to Compete. Right. Um, we're going through the second time because our cameras went down and all. So anyway, our mics went down. So basically this episode, right, we're gonna go we're gonna have a chat about fitness one oh one kind of. So it's the idea is to get people off the couch and get to get them you know, people who like are struggling, unmotivated, maybe a bit overweight, injuries, a bit older than the average maybe person that wants to go out and get fit. And this is kind of to talk about all the the shite diets that are out there, the shite routines, the nonsense that's there. <clears throat> the reason why I asked Noel to come on, because Noel is one of the most elite athletes I know. Um, he's a multiple All-Ireland champion, uh, international championship, on you know, few under the belt, and qualified nutritionist for the last 10 years. And you've been a boxer for 18 years of experience there. So... Um, so maybe you, we can talk about nutrition, sleep, mentality, and exercise routines. Yeah. We kick it off into them. So, um, so first, then let's go into some obvious factors being food and nutrition. First of all, right? So we were talking a little bit earlier on, you know, the three meals a day, snacking, and how that can become a bad habit as well almost like you would have for a long time trained that way yeah. but not felt at your best oh well, that's right and um, for most of my years actually coming into weigh-ins because i found it the best way at the time for me to lose weight because i was training two three times a day and i was only having three meals a day and um, one of the meals could have been at seven o'clock in the morning then i would i'd probably have my dinner a bit earlier i'd have about three o'clock and then later on about eight o'clock <coughs> i'd have something small so um coming up to my weigh ins that's what I done. But what I found was I was always tired, um I was feeling fairly fatigued all the time. I had no energy, um, I was cranky, you know, my body wasn't recovering proper at all. So um that diet back then because I, I was still only young, but it's not really a good diet in my opinion. Yeah, because you do feel a lot more sluggish on that kind of diet, don't you? And yeah. you know, I, I changed I remember I was talking about sorry, I remember I was talking about the intermittent fasting and i changed my routine and start doing that and i think that that's helped me an awful lot and the reason why i think it's helped is because i used to go out and i feel heavy and i feel sluggish and we pound the pavement and i was heavy i was over 16 stone doing it and i this this is actually pretty amazing like that i did i was thinking about it i'd seen it online and one of the lads said to me i'm about to do that a friend of mine does it and he runs like that so let's let's try it then we download an app start doing it that day before i started i tried to do a 3k jog and a kilometer and a half into it my shins were killing me i was out of breath and i would have been making excuses if i'd said it was my shins that stopped me yeah. three days later into the fast i did 7k here non-stop and the only reason i stopped was because my lunch and i was like what's going on and then i read more into it and it was saying that you know, after 12 hours, you pull from your glycogen stores and all that. Now, the only thing is, I'm not big enough intermittent fasting because I think it's great, okay. but I wouldn't recommend it for everybody. Are you still doing it? I'm still doing it. Still at the moment. Yeah. And the other lad that was doing it with you, how did he find it? Loved it. He, he's in the army going up and down mountains. It's Quinn. He's been on it himself uh, on his podcast. And uh, 
he's still doing it. A lot of lads in the army are doing it now, and they feel it's helped their performance, helped their sleep. Um, because you know we were saying about loading them three meals a day and snacking, you're heavier going to bed at night. Your food, your body's constantly processing stuff, which takes energy from you. And um, then at the end of the day, you're not sleeping deep sleep. It's like we were saying, you go out drinking and you eat a kebab at the end of the night and you have a load of calories just from the drink alone and you're, you're the reason why you wake up shattered it's probably not the drink it's more so that's it you know because if you didn't eat food after drinking you actually feel better yeah you do day. actually kind of makes sense like if you don't eat something late at night or something heavy at night you wake up the next morning uh, you're more awake your body didn't have to work through the whole night trying to digest food yeah uh, you feel a lot lighter yeah you have more energy and then when you wake up and you do have a bit of a, a breakfast like your body digests it all fairly quick instead of going on top of more food that you had last night you know so it actually makes sense when you think about it yeah it's like if a lot of people can find a slippery slope where you know if you left football training or if you left running a few years ago and then you're sitting on the couch and you get in the routine of working and you fall on the couch, you watch the routine and you're eating the snack. You, you can get t- fierce into snacking while you're eating or watching TV. You have to have a snack in your hands. And that's one thing I found disciplined me when I was doing intermittent fasting. Like I was saying, you know, Shemaine cooked, ch- cooked chicken and I had, we had a dinner with it. Then I was going to go back to it because once it's sitting out in the county, you, you know you go back and you yeah. pick at it. Then yeah. I realized I'm not, I'm actually satisfying a need that's not hunger. It's like a habit even though it was lovely then that's when i realized once i stopped doing that then i ate my dinner at night hit me fast and i'll just sip water then for the rest of the day have a black coffee in the morning then 10 or 11 o'clock once you wake up you're 12 hours in anyway you know you feel fresher it's only a few more hours and i get a run in then before i do so like 15 or 16 hours into a fast i run and you pull straight from the fat stores and we'll talk about the we we're talking about the um, the fuel sources of your body later on, and all, but like I'm not like I said, I'm not saying it for everybody because if you do it wrong, especially for women, it can bring on early menopause and things like that because there are iron deficiencies. No, important that is for for women as well, but for men, they really should try it. And for women as well, once you're keeping a good balanced diet and have your iron supplements, it really does it makes you lose weight well but also ma- maintains muscle mass and keeps you sharp and feeling good and mentally sharp. Well, yeah. Um, the diet that works, I might actually give that a go. The, the diet that I found that works most for me is just eating a well-balanced diet, um, healthy carbs, a lot of fruit, vegetables, and yeah. plenty of water throughout the day. I'd often have, I could often have a meal fairly late at night, you know, it'd be like you know a healthy meal and i'd wake up the next morning just this is just me personally i wouldn't be too bad i'd feel okay you know but um that's just what's with me but i never actually gave the intermittent intermittent fasting a go i might try it now now that you had good results and uh, queen had good results so i wouldn't mind giving it a go and just see if it works for me as well you know what you know what's different though between us is that like since you were a kid you were exercising so you would have built a base fitness not that it wouldn't matter how much of what you're eating obviously f- nutrition is massive but it was one of the factors hold me back where you would have been the kid running around and, and you would have been building on top of yeah. fitness levels and you would have been eating well and eating veg and fruit and all that and you you would have like i remember like before you go to even your training you would have been eating like just peas and you'd have like certain things you, you you'd eat that you knew you were eating that was good where i was kind of heavy and sluggish and coming at it from no fitness base and it helped me a lot so you know there's there is two different if if you're sitting at home and you are an athlete who has a fitness base but needs to get healthy you can be you know you can be unhealthy as well and can still like run or clamber to and say oh, i'm grand and eat badly all around you you know um but i think that like too much of everything is bad for you you know and yeah. well i said it's like the caveman diet you know and that's where that intermittent fasting comes from it sounds real severe but when they had hunted and got a kill they distribute it to to all the tribe and they'd eat one big meal of it they would or they'd eat a meal of it and then they'd portion it for later on they'd have a portion of it and then until the next kill which could be the next day then they'd eat again and yeah. the first few days you feel a bit hungry but then after that you're it's grand it's a routine and you feel better your body's not constantly processing food all day long and um i think it really works well but it's not the one solution for everybody that's it. So I know people that's only talking to recently on vegan diets as well and yeah. 
they've only went on a feeding diet because they tried it out. Like they said, they give it a go, and they said they've they've never felt as good. Or like you said, they're running longer, they're running faster, they're feeling more healthy, or they have more energy. I tried the feeding. Now I only tried the feeding diet for three weeks, but this is just me. I just felt tired all the time, you know. So like you say, it's the lads I was talking to. Um, they felt better after a week, two weeks after being on the you know, and yeah, it it just wasn't for me, you know. Funny you said that. I I tried it myself because it's game changers. Now thinking from Netflix and a few few people are doing the meatless Mondays that I know. And I said, look, because at the platform here, let me do all what they're talking about. You know, all the diets. I'll do the fast, and I might even try the kind of diet. You know, where they just do eat, yeah. meat, meat. Or maybe I don't know. Like it, it seems a bit excessive, but. I tried the vegan diet and I felt tired and I, I spoke to a few vegans, few vegan athletes. I told them I felt tired and what do you eat? But maybe I wasn't being smart about what I was putting together food-wise either, you know. Um, since since that, near the end of it, I started feeling better. A lot of people said to me, you look way fresher and yeah. all that. Maybe I did. But one thing I did get rid of was dairy. Now, it was no animal products whatsoever. No, I'm not saying dairy is, is the devil or anything like that, but I think I was having too much of it. Like, we were having a milkman came to our house three times a day when the when it, he was le- delivering super milk, and I, I was the only one that was going through it. Like, so that was that was two litres each time. So that was, what's that, two, four, six, six litres a week. And then I come in and have tea here where there's other milk. It's an awful lot, you know, dairy mm. to process you. But then, like, too much of anything as well can be bad. But I do know dairy in excess can put a weight on you can make you heavy and can like can make your skin not great and especially when some people could have a slight tolerance to dairy as well a lot of people there's a lot of uh, scientific research done as well one of the best things after a run or training is a glass of milk yeah that's true we were talking about this yeah and chocolate milk chocolate milk funny enough feel supposed to fuel your cells a lot quicker and it's um, a lot of research that says it's one of the best things to have after a run. Yeah, and weightlifting and yeah, you know, anything like yeah. the muscles. Yeah. And it has electrolytes in it. It's one thing that I didn't think had mm-hmm. electrolytes because we were talking about this earlier on where you can get the electrolyte tablets and uh, they're like almost zero calories and a lot of people take them when they're cycling and, and hill running and it's a fuel mm-hmm. source. They're just replenishing the salts you're losing through the exercise kind of, aren't they? And uh, then and yet, bananas, doing yeah. them, avocados. That's it. Um, what else we say was doing it? You, you you eat a lot of yams and yeah, sweet, and sweet potatoes. potatoes as well. They have electrolytes in them as well. Yeah, a lot of things you wouldn't think. No, it's mad. So a lot of people think the only way they can get electrolytes is in powder form or tablet form, but you can get them through your foods as well. Yeah, and how like obviously it is important. It's not like you don't have to go and buy electrolyte supplements, but you once you eat a healthy diet, fruit and veg, so obviously you're getting electrolytes from there straight yeah. away. But um, also, we were talking about good carbs and good fats, which is similar along the lines of avocados and yams and things like that. Um, I Ever since the vegan diet, I do eat less um, meat. But it's not... Um, it's not Well, I just try not, not to be excessive or gluttony on anything, you know? Like, I, I come in here today and I had... You see the beans I had there today? And they're nice and they fuel you. They're not baked beans, but they're, they're like lentils and things like that. And... Um, I don't think it's nearly convenience now I real, I've i made me it's opened my eyes up to more than just meat so every meal I have doesn't need to have meat on it now you know okay. so now I had lunch today could be falafels and lentils but like that's really good carbs and I can go out and run with it you know that kind of way look every day say if I'm coming up to, a, to compete in something or I want to get myself back fit and like healthy my day would consist of it could be I'd always introduce bro- uh, boiled eggs I'd f- have plenty of fish brown rice uh, whole grain rice yams sweet potatoes obviously vegetables and fruit but, but that that's kind of would be the main part of my diet obviously chicken fillers and all that stuff like that as well but uh, if I had a steak and all that stuff like that I feel great after it yeah if I now again it's probably just the amount like I do a lot of training a lot of times I train probably twice a day sometimes three times a day so my body needs all that carbs and it's, it's using all the carbs up and the protein as well for repairing my muscles Um, somebody that probably does probably only a little bit of training uh, once a day would probably feel full and sluggish after 
all that field they're eating you know but it's um it could be just because i'm doing so much training yeah you're burning it off yeah. you're using the energy uh cells and that so like one thing i would say to someone who was trying to get fit would be you know look at their diet and look at how much dairy they're taking in it might be more than they think or it might be you know it might not just be dairy it might just be you know what cereals are terrible for you and bread you know i know whole grain or whole meal bread is a little bit better but still you'd want to limit it wouldn't you you'd like yeah. you'd, you'd really like i don't think cereals good in any really no, form not. isn't it like as so many chemicals and all fortified stuff in there and it, it spikes your blood sugars and you know it, it kind of turns the fat pretty quick in your body you know so it's yeah. not really good for you at all you're the only good the only one i'd say is good is porridge yeah that's know? true yeah that'd be of all the cereals it's the only one yeah you know yeah and you give that's obviously the oats and the yeah. naturalness of it um, do you do you know they do say that the human body can't uh, absorb or break down raw oats oh really yeah so that's why a lot of people have porridge all the time the body won't absorb anything out of the oats so if you are having porridge out make sure they're well cooked so your body can absorb everything into them if they're not you're kind of wasting your time yeah like make sure it's real hot like yeah. proper like proper cooked through probably a yeah, properly soft cooked through as well so your body can absorb everything into it otherwise you're wasting your time you're not going to get anything out of it yeah so on the, on the food nutrition side of things oh you know a good way of thinking of it is uh, plenty of fruit and veg you can't go wrong eat don't eat big bulk meals especially not so late at night yeah and um, make sure like you rest well because we move on to sleep and how sleep is so important and as well if someone's trying to say like i'm trying to get into running or weightlifting, i'm going to need loads of protein was the protein oversold to everyone a little bit like that you need so much protein like yeah. and the body can only handle so much i know, I know they so obviously we were talking about the the whey protein and the casein protein and uh, the big bags of protein and you know do you need them i don't i think everybody should just get what they need from their fields and they can get them from the fields um like what i was saying to you earlier if i could see if i could see them sitting down in front of me now making that whey protein or making any protein and i see what they're putting into it right then i i you know i might take it after a run or to help your body repair itself i just i just don't trust any of them and that's yeah. that's just me personally you know so that's why i just stick to my thoughts yeah yeah try to keep them right there a bit here yeah. yeah um the way i think you're right and like i do know that's yeah see i'm in strength condition and well even the lecturers are talking about protein for recovery and i said i asked a question like what and said well you really want to know what you're getting and where you're getting it from like protein whey protein pure whey came from the farmers so that to carry gold on it because it's when they're pasteurizing milk and the whey comes up and they used to feed it to the animals and then because it was just a, the protein source and then they freeze dried it and they gave it out but i think along the lines they added a lot of chemicals to it they added flavorings they had preservatives they added all this stuff and you know it was unregulated for a long time where you didn't know what you're having didn't you not you know no. and i think in, in a lot of ways now now we're kind of like you know do you need it like you know if you get two chicken fillets that's like 40 grams of protein there almost isn't it like or it's like 30 grams of protein there <laughs> and salmon you know we're not even that much of it you know i think that we definitely got oversold in the protein market i think and we jumped into it now i've taken it well, go back and forth sometimes taken because i take it try to get the best brands or try to take it for recovery i do think it helps recovery a bit but if you you know the big thing is don't if you're feeling heavy and you want to get at some don't run out and buy a bag of protein you'll gain a load of weight you'll be adding a load of dairy to it every time so you're up on that as well and i think that you're just going to feel way more sluggish and tired and you're going to body to be over processing things what do you think of that um yeah it's only when you were talking to me there as well something came into my head and something i i heard a few years ago and i've i've stuck by it a lot is every day for for most of your time throughout the day stick to look this is what i was told years ago and i've looked up all about it down through the years learned about it in college stick to low gi diet yeah okay all the time because you're it gives you a slow release of, release of energy you have the energy about the whole day and um, your body burns it off like it doesn't surrender your body burns it off easier 
And then when you come back from an exercise or from a run, it has to be done within a half an hour, obviously for your body to absorb. That's the best time to do it, half an hour straight after training. And do the opposite. So have low G- or have high GI right. quick because obviously it fills up all your cells quicker. Mm-hmm. Say I was having um, brown rice or whole grain rice throughout the whole day, low GI. And after a run, I had white rice. Right rice is high, do you know? Okay. Or if you had like <clears throat> an orange and all stuff, like that would be, be high GI. Um, and it fills everything. So I was told to stick to your low GI throughout the day, but just after a training session, have something, something high. High GI. As well, to repair like the body kind of repair the body and because yeah. it just it goes into yourself straight away your body basically sucks them all in straight away it takes all the nutrients and yeah. whatever from it so that is one thing that we said that like as well the sleep side of things then if we move like to that a bit so so basically w- with the food and diet we're saying that you don't need to follow like you don't need to do intermittent fasting or you don't need to limit yourself to you know two three meals a day bulking them in i don't don't snack all day don't fall down for that trap i don't think i think it's you know have your fruit and veg have your your bit of meat like no problem but um really look at the the quality and the quantity your portion That's size it. is massive isn't it like i know as kids we were told eat all the bread, but now we know that you know make a portion size that it's not you're not overdoing it you know just a well-balanced diet well but for if i was to recommend for anybody just a well-balanced diet um don't keep snacking on everything throughout the yeah. whole day in between you'll just always be full and sluggish and you're basically giving your body too much to do. Yeah. Uh, well balanced diet. Look, you could have five, like medium, small size meals a day, and like, that's the best. Yeah. No, I think you're right. And you know, one thing you know about sleep then as well. Like, eat your meal before, a good bit before sleep, a few hours before, and sip your water and let that digest. Because water helps your food digest that way. Water is key. Isn't yeah. It? Water wow. is like. You know, if if you're not drinking water for the morning and planning going to run, you're rode off, aren't you? You're yeah. at, you're at nothing, but not that you're at nothing, but like you're so not fueled. Last, I always know was if you had runs was going on lately, and I was feeling a bit tired and sluggish and like fatigued, and I wasn't really enjoying the runs. So the day before, I said, do "You know what I'm going to do today?" Even though I knew what it was, but I just wasn't doing it. Do you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to drink water for the whole like for the whole day make sure i get plenty of water in like even just sipping on water you know throughout the day i went on a run then that morning i done all i done a run and i done all plyometrics and sprints and all stuff like that and i had loads of energy as soon as i started the run i felt great you know i was being i was able to put more effort in it and it is that it's it's still with the it's still with the water as soon as i jumped mm-hmm. up out of bed i felt like i had loads of energy my body was loose you know, so yeah. water is definitely like a big heat I think. Water, water is massive, I think, yeah. you know, and people worry about, you know, flooding their body with water and washing out their salts and all that thing. But like, I think if you're eating a good balanced diet, mm-hmm. like you hear this horror stories of people fl- flooding their lungs and all like, that's like, you wonder. That's, but that's only if you're literally, you're necking water stop. back, you know, yeah. like you're literally necking a whole glass of water, another one, another one. Yeah. But that's why you say sip your water through today. Yeah, that's, that's the best way to do and it. And that, that way you don't get stitched no. when you do go for your, your whatever. But as well, you know, funny you were saying about water and how it made you feel. A friend of mine is on a diet now and he said, you know, his mood is way better. He said he thinks it's something to do with him after up in the water. And which is true because I think the water flushes out them toxins in your body and all this. We get like, the more processed foods you eat, the more toxins and i know the more convenient food is all processed you know you get it out of a packet you know even them cups of soup they're full of salt you know they're ripped and open and poured oh, into no. the cup and once you drink water you start flushing all that out straight away the body's quite quick at flushing that stuff out and i think that's you know the mood is lifting because the chemicals are going same reason you're depressed after drinking a lot of beer full of chemicals like same mostly all those frozen food you see yeah all p- p- the processed and frozen food they have everything added to them. Yeah. You know, they're not good for you at all. Like, I just see a lot of people and you're telling me they're eating healthy and everything and when you go to the fridge, everything's frozen. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. there's everything added to them. They're not good for you at all. Yeah, it should, like, they have to be full of stuff to preserve yeah, them. Exactly. Even, you know, like years ago, they used to preserve stuff from before freezers in with salt. It was probably way better because then they rinse it off and but like, now you can freeze stuff for like 20 years now, you know, <laughs> or stick them in the oh, fridge yeah. and it'll last you see the, the expiry dates going on for ages <laughs> and how the colors of them do you ever go to the dairy even you know you're going like in, this is one thing people can fall into if they're out on the road out in a van you know routine is big you know for i know it shouldn't be an excuse because you can always work around and find a good diet and bring a good food with you 
and it's much cheaper at the end of the day but people out on the road in vans doing you know electrical work or on site or installing things or plumbing whatever like you know it's very easy to go and get your chicken roll every day and that's terrible even that white bread you, you know you can feel how chewy that is you stop eating bread for a while or even eat some whole grain bread you go back to white bread that's like chewing gum almost isn't it, it just know, sits in a clump it's horrible when you think of it like that yeah yeah it is that is what it's like so like i think that you know the big thing is like if if, if if you're in that routine which a lot of people are they need to prepare lunch you know that's and it doesn't take that hard like and there is convenient options there like you seen the the packet i had there it was of that that lentils rice and it was one minute and a half in in the microwave and it's much better alternative it's probably not as good as like boiling rice straight from the pan but it's pretty close to you know yeah. it's way better than eating white rolls and crisps and i know i know like a lot of them will, will say that they don't have access to a microwave and yeah. stuff like that but still at the same time a better alternative would be to go in and get a salad ball or something rather yeah. than getting rolls and all, all the time you know like it's, it's <coughs> i suppose when they're on the road all the time if you think about it the main thing that they usually bring is either the easiest thing for them to bring is like sandwiches or um you know stuff yeah. like that but if they are buying stuff in the shop it's just to pick up salads or just try to think of the healthier alternative mm-hmm. um look even if in the van until they get to a shop maybe snack on nuts and stuff like that you know yeah or even like it's even a little bit better if you got like you know then tomato based wraps instead yeah. of the white bread they, sandwiches that's it. yeah be better, you know like be better than the white reds yeah uh, exactly bread, yeah. don't don't just bring a sandwich say this is my new diet like it's not that's not like it's no better than the white roll you're gonna buy otherwise you know yeah. so like but as well sleep on top of things like we're talking about sleep was massive Ma- sleep was never spoken about until like 10 like not that long ago a few years ago where in terms of how much it actually affects your performance and uh, i do keep a heart rate sensor on me and i think you know when you're getting going in the fitness thing it's not a bad thing to do if you if you bob to get one on a watch or that it's good for like when you're starting out i do notice small little trends if i don't get a great sleep my resting heart rate is like 10 beats per minute higher it's like your body is using more energy just to get you around but like your energy and your focus and your motivation all is affected by your sleep which ends up in your results affected by your sleep eventually okay. you know and would you so would you know that before you start your run right i feel i didn't get enough sleep for you now right soon look at this is what the watch is going to show so you kind of know by how you feel i know like i know coming into work that yeah like i might glance down and say i'm wrecked and i look glance down and say, yeah my heart rate's way higher now it wouldn't stop me from doing my run like if i was setting out to do it that day i'd still do it and sometimes i feel better after doing it and i feel more awake but i will crash later on that day because okay at the end of the day you need your sleep you need you know i get six to seven hours of sleep and i'd be you needing the seven hour more than the six because you know if i get under six especially and that does happen some nights i had a terrible terrible run in but i would talk about it you know getting into into exercise and what can happen if you try yourself at too much i think that's what happened to me i was going out and i was doing runs that i was i didn't have the base fitness for and this is okay. a big thing for for people who you know want to get out and want to start running and you know there's a way of calculating your max heart rate which is it's a rough way of calculating it but it's fairly accurate which is 220 minus your age so that would mean 220 minus 31 is mine so 189 is my max heart rate so you, you know you can if you want to build fitness you go between 40 and 80 percent of that so at the moment I, I got i crashed I, I was running and for a few weeks and weeks and months i was going better and better and better then it just fell off a cliff and i couldn't do anything and then um, now what i'm doing is i'm going out i'm running uh, at a slow pace all under 150 beats per minute 152 beats per minute which is under my 80 percent which is hard to do you have to go pretty slow to do that but i'm doing that and what i'm doing what i'm finding is i'm building a base it's like a triangle i think the why did you build the base to higher up the peak so when you do want to do all that stuff you know you get there and neil's doing that right? your your cousin neil yeah. was on he's he's doing the same thing and you've seen years ago how away he was and how far he's come since then so yeah. he basically started from sitting down i'll never be able to run one kilometer 
Yeah. And you can see what he's doing now. He's doing over a hundred kilometer mountain runs and Yeah, he was trying he was trying to get me to do uh, what was a marathon, a hill marathon, uh fifty two K like from the week away <laughs> and all I said, Look at uh, like I, I I was I was only out there the week before last doing a run with him and Quinn and I did terrible and it's a place I know, it's a route I know and I was running, I had my GoPro with me and I was stopping on the flats and I would never stop on the flats. Like yeah. flats is where you recover your heart rate. And like I was going slow and I was looking at my heart rate and it was like 127, real low. And I was like burning out. And you know what? how I burnt out and what I realized is that I got to a stage where my pH levels in, in college, they were saying that they could have dropped because you were throwing yourself at it and your pH levels were dropping and then you just exhausted yourself. And I couldn't sleep for like three weeks uh, properly and then i was wrecked so that's why now every time i go out i do a slow run and i don't i don't i feel better like and hopefully i will be able to come back and build up my fitness so that's why i think it's important for anyone not that it's essential but if like you are real heavy or you're older the older you are the lower your max heart rate Mm -hmm. and uh, i say it's my ma as well like my ma she's mad older and like that but i said to her she she just said to me she joined the running club cherry archer run club and uh she was like look um what's my rate, heart rate like and I said that's good you're building the base and that's that's really good for you because your max heart rate is 165 or 170 whatever it is and uh, so you know that is something to consider that I didn't know you know people think you just go out and start running which a lot of people do you probably did because you were young and you had bomb load of energy I did done all my done all my life and then um, so you seen like <clears throat> I sent you the picture you seen how bad I got there year and a half two years ago we put on 40 pound yeah but when you think about a 40 pound like i went from spot nearly 70 kilos to 89 kg yeah yeah you know so i know at that at that point i couldn't run i probably struggled to run one kilometer yeah you and know, you, you were saying you were going at run a kilometer going walking back to the house walking back there. saying just you know i just found it so hard and i was walking back to the house and i was a uh, saying oh i can't do this will i ever get back fitting in that's basically what's going through my head and what i find the best <coughs> what worked for me is setting setting your, yourself up for something so it could be anything if, if it's um to compete in <coughs> a boxing fight to like maybe book a, a run like like the one i done was i booked um a 5k run it was well it was only a, a park run that i done and I said I set myself up for that, get my fitness up to get that, to do that run, and then before you knew it, now it knew it. Then I set um, the sixty kilometer the Ballyhora Mountain Trail oh, yeah, run. Yeah, remember that. I think we booked that probably three months before it. Yeah, and that means I really had to start training. So I knew that I was going to end up doing it. So I said, look, I better, I have to start training. I have to start up my runs. Do you know? So I think the best thing somebody can do is. Have something to look forward to, like have a goal to to reach, you know. Um, instead of just going out and and kind of for doing it for, it's if you just do it to try to get yourself fit, you're gonna be like, oh, I'll start tomorrow, I'll start tomorrow. But have something to look forward to and have a goal there. It makes it easier for you. And also becomes becomes a habit that you enjoy, doesn't it? it yeah. Becomes a routine. Like I know initially running was like, oh man, I wrecked. Like and to have to, you know, I remember she Shireen used to say to me like. Oh, it's different for you. You love running, and like, and I said, I was like, I don't love running. You put yourself through a hardship for the next half hour, or forty minutes, but then you do when you get fit. You love it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I know. I went down and did a fifteen k there on Wednesday, and uh, I did it slower, but I loved it. Really loved it. And I had my few tunes I could listen to in my earphones, and I just enjoyed t- breathing in the fresh air, and um, felt great to get it done as well. You know, you 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 sit back in the house, and then maybe that weekend you will enjoy your bit of grub you know a bit more you said fuck it i will have you know whatever here's a prime example right that you can tell was about i remember you years ago okay years and you you found it hard you found it hard to run yeah you found it hard you know you 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 could run maybe i don't know 500 meters and you you were getting awful trouble with your legs and you know and even years ago you know you'd have a bit more weight in you and yeah. you know little things like your face could be red mm-hmm. you know and now every time i see you now you look your color and your face your redness is on your face yeah you, you look great you lost loads of weight yeah you're running like 10 kilometers now to you no problem you're doing like the mountain runs how, how like how was it for you you know because you're like for somebody that 
like like yourself there a few years ago that couldn't like run a kilometer not, how did you do it not even a few years ago like seven or eight months ago you yeah know? what i did was i thought and a lot of people are going to think this about themselves oh running's not for me i just can't do it you know and i just keep getting injuries and feeling sore here and there and that's the way i was i was like maybe it just I was the wrong frame for running. I'm just too heavy for running. Or maybe I just mechanics are wrong, and I've ran. I have wasn't don't have an athletic childhood or whatever. And um, I I was going out doing one run a week, and I struggled with my shins. And I always complained my shins for years. Really, I think when I got my diet on track, that stopped. It was like the inflammation died down, and I was full sure I could feel the muscles and the bones breaking apart and all and i went to a physio and this is a big thing for anyone sitting up on a couch and feeling like oh no that hip or that knee will be at me get to a physio get it sorted straight away and that's one thing you told me i thought go down and you actually recommended the physio to yeah. me and uh, i went down and i said your your muscles are so knotted in your calves that they're pulling it away from your shin so when you go like the muscles are not up more and more and you're never actually releasing them she says we need to strip them out and I used to start cycling because it was non-impact and it was grand. You know, cycling's great. You get out in the outdoors and, you know, and it's good. And, but the only thing is it's not as intense as running. You don't get the same results. No. So, cycling's great aerobic. So you keep your heart rate, doesn't go up. But, you know, if you want to lose weight and tackle the actual, but, you know, you're, you know, they say the most dangerous fat around you is around your waistline. And running just like full body you know, even your upper body, because you're powering through your run, you know, the whole lot of you, like, it's like a cleanse, and once you get good at it, so, like, the answer, like, how I changed it was, I started fasting, I can't rule out that, that that helped me so much, it really did, and, um, like, my, I, I, you know, I wasn't heavy and sluggish, and I noticed that straight away, I went out for a run, I was, like, light, and even though you think you haven't eaten since last night, like, 12 or 13 hours ago, you think you'd know energy you do have energy you have plenty of energy and there's three energy systems in the body there's the atp and that's the one you use when you stand up or you walk around that's your creatine levels that's you know get your moving that's when you take off sprinting mm-hmm. it's the only reason you can do it for only a few seconds you die off because that's your atp running out then what comes in is, is your glycogen stores so that's part of your food and what you've eaten that day and uh, then is your oxidative so that's your how fit are you your vo2 max so i got my vo2 max tested there in college recently it wasn't as good as i thought it would be but i'm only starting out running and it's good to get a number on it and it was 40 and um but like what helped me then was i, I was intermittent fasting but i was also eating the right things and i was starting to run regularly then my injuries were disappearing i'd gone to the physio and i was running regularly and as the weight came off, it was easier to run. The lighter I was, and and the fasting was helping me sleep and recover quicker because I wasn't, you know, eating stupid. And I had down my intake of drinking where it was probably a few points every second weekend, where it was like once a month maybe, but not in excess, you know, like a few points, like or whatever, or a couple of glass of wine now and again. Um, but all that probably combined, and 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 obviously the college knowing the stuff like and strength and conditioning and speaking to yourself and i can't say that i haven't been helped an awful lot by yourself even and quinn and you know neil has helped and a lot of people Vinny and uh, my brother kevin and a lot of people have come on and said who, who've been much more experienced than me at running or different sport specific stuff and been telling me what they've learned and that's why the reason why i had you here because i'm still on that journey it's not even mm-hmm. a year into it but I'm getting unreal results for me. I can't believe it. I feel way fresher, way better. And that's, you know, no so, machine source. Would you agree with me, and we are on the same page with this, first things first, get your diet right and make things a lot easier yeah, for you. It is first things first, really, isn't um, it? That's why we started with the food and nutrition. I think yeah, yeah. it is right, isn't it? Start, start, off, start off slow. If you, you're really, your, your level of fitness is really low. Um, yeah look if you if you don't like people looking at you feel like watching you go go to a quiet park somewhere you know start off with a walk mm-hmm. do your walk for as long as as you feel you know that you need to where after a couple of weeks you feel yourself getting fitter you say okay i'm not tired anymore like you know yeah. that's when you're up it mm-hmm. start walking faster yes you know yeah. do that for until you feel the same way i used to get tired two miles back 
you know that's when you know you can start turn it into a little jog a bit yeah yeah you know so start off slow don't don't rush yourself you know because if you you haven't trained for so long you will get fitter it yeah. will come to you all of a sudden and you, you start feeling great you'll be able to you know up your run you'll be able to start doing a few sprints um it's good if you do know if you do know somebody into fitness or into some sort of sport it is good to have somebody there to guide you along the way like you we said earlier you had me quinn neil you know i think that helps a lot as well and yeah. um, if you don't but like the thing is if you don't have them people so this is what this will hopefully this, do. You, exactly. you can find these things yeah. you know and that's what their aim is i've done it down i've done it down through the years um people i've, I've known friends of mine people in my jobs that i i didn't like that i barely knew and would have came up to me one day would have been talking to me about training and i would said tell you what what are you doing the weekend or what are you doing tomorrow nothing i'll bring you out and i've done that for weeks and i've done it for months you know when these are people that could that couldn't run for like a minute without having to stop and was nearly getting sick and you know and they've like the, the mentality is a big thing isn't it like yeah. you know to talk about like like one one big thing is I used to always work out with Jimmy in the gym, right? I've, I've done like I've done a few different routines. So I, I used to go to the gym the whole time, no cardio, just lifting weights for a few years, and they get big and get strong, and um, you did develop certain things. And Jimmy was good. Jimmy was getting a lot of good information. It was bodybuilding and the difference with bodybuilding. Body is is sport is muscle specific. So you go in one day and it's a. Uh, you know you might do shoulders and chest and or you, you might do legs and you might do that's what it was and it was good to see the human body like how it can contract and, and react to exercise that's what i'll build a base in does it, it makes you look good it makes it you look does, better in your tops as well yeah you know? it, probably it does, does it makes you it does it makes you yeah you know if you see anybody going to the gym and you know they're like they're lifting fairly heavy weights yeah they, they do look good their, their muscles are pumped you know they you know it's it, it could gain confidence for people yeah to, to start moving into something else which is probably where like jimmy was around like the huge young person going to a gym or doing any routine that was close by you know he was like i'm going to the gym you're not going to be yeah okay i'll go with you and then we got into it and we were having a laugh while doing it and then then i realized i couldn't go to the gym without a gym partner then and then one big thing of mentality is to get used to going by yourself you have to you know if you start a class that's a, say a yoga or pilates or a spin class and you're texting someone else, you're relying on that person, that person's gonna let you down. And once that person lets you down, that's your out. You know, that's your excuse out. That's all you need. And, you know, I think that if you're going to go down this route, it's good to jog with someone if you have someone handy. But to be able to go out and say, I'm gonna go jogging three, three times a week, I'm gonna go walking three times a week, regardless if anyone comes with me. And have your gear ready, have plenty of running tops that are there. Like, there's no excuses. Have your runners there clean. Like, you know, have two pairs if you need you know have no excuses that like you know to get out and go by yourself because i think that's a big thing isn't it like you know i often hear people oh they won't go with me to class so i, di I didn't bother going myself then you know that's a big downfall isn't it i know it's, it's well what you were talking about a minute ago there Um there's a lot of people i know who you know if they had to jog down a down a canal they <laughs> they just want to stop you yeah. know it's 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 like they, they want people to see them running it's more so the way everything is uh like you know all over tv and all and everybody's all on show for each other now like and it's gas if they're jogging somewhere where there's loads of people around they jog forever yeah if they're jogging somewhere in, in a park along a canal they just want to stop they just find it so hard you know it's it's like it's more so they're doing it for everybody else than doing it for themselves you yeah. know so you have to go out on a run like <laughs> like you're probably the same as me now I go out on a run because I enjoy it now. I kind of get focused in my own mind, and I know I'm doing this to get myself fit and to for myself, the the for the gains for myself. You know, it's mm -hmm. I don't care about. I know that I'm doing it for myself. I don't care if there's anybody with me or not. But it's good to have somebody now in that time if you want to. You know, yeah, just dead, deadly. Yeah, it's it's great to have a bit of company sometimes. But like it is like you start off, get 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 it done for yourself and get out there and get sorted. Um, but like that's why I think that the mentality there of just getting out and getting it done is is right, and you know a lot of things as well. Don't be disheartened. I think people, you know, expect you, know, you often hear people weighing in every few days and all that. But I, I think people should weigh in. I, I weigh in once a month, and yeah, same. Uh, 
and I don't think it should be done anymore. Even if you're doing once a week, is a bit too much because they say that if you got out and got running and you're heavy, or uh, even if you're not heavy, you're a bit of weight on you, you gain muscle first. It's like you, it's you're dem- you, you, you know, and that that that's weighs heavier. And then you could look at that after a week or two and say, this isn't working for me at all. I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm off the ground gaining two or three pounds. One thing I do suggest is I have one of these electric scales at home. I think they're great. It, it does your fat percentage. That's a way better market to go off because you can actually see your fat going down and you might be you might have a few routines. You might do weights once a week, you might do two runs and a bit of cycling where you might be you know, your muscle mass might be going up but you're maintaining whatever. But I think that weigh in don't weigh in even every week is too much, isn't it? Like it, yeah. once every two weeks maybe, but I weigh in once a month. Once a month, definitely that's all I'd weigh. <laughs> weigh like the only the only time I care about weight mm. is when I'm weighing in because I have to I have yeah. to make a certain weight. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think people should worry too much about weight. I think more so they should they should look at you know how toned their body's getting or how how good their but they're starting to feel and how good they're starting to look in clothes. So they should just be happy about how fit they're getting, like and how just how better their body is. You know. So if somebody does put on like two kilos, they're not going to be like sad because they put on two kilos if their body's looking better more muscular and you know yeah less fat yeah no you're you're right you're right with that because um like it is you know you're, you are right because like weight can be important for some people but I, I think it is more fat percentage as well you know and i guess once you get into your routine you start getting healthier anyway mm-hmm. so it becomes less important to you like i noticed one thing with the fast and that is that you know the belt buckle was getting you know like my jeans that like were loose on me and i kept going to the next notch and the next notch and i was like jesus you know <laughs> um so like i think that it, like to, to watch maybe watch fat percentage weigh in no more than once a month if you're gonna weigh in isn't that that's better uh, definitely yeah and another thing is like uh, they do say expect four weeks at least to, mm-hmm. to see results <clears throat> because if they keep weighing in uh, too soon they're going to be getting on the scales and they're going to be heavier. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be putting them off. They're not going to want to train. Exactly. Is that this is not working. And they have to realise, look, they're getting more muscle. Yeah. Some of the days they get on at the early starts, it could be more fluid in the body, you know. it's mm-hmm. They're going to weigh heavier and um, that's it. So definitely no sooner than a month. And your body you know? reacts to They say even the more you're running and putting your body under that pressure, this is probably why running is a bit better. You, you know, your, your, your arteries get bigger and your heart actually gets bigger, like in your whole overall health you know gets better and you know when you when you pump more blood through you you're pumping more oxygen you're more awake you have nutrients you your good blood cells you know i know people say oh you're running out pen the paving you'll be able to run but there are smart ways of doing everything you know and you can't rule things out like you don't make the excuses of these things you know um and you know what you're doing really i think this comes back to the mentality side of things you know if you do sit back and say Oh, it's a little bit rainy outside like it's ireland you know it's gonna be pissing <laughs> yeah. rain outside like it's not gonna be warm either you know you're gonna have to get into yourself a jacket or even them you know the under you know the under armor kind of tight tops are like you know the running ones after two minutes you're gonna be fucking roasting anyway. that's it warm and like you're by not going out all you're doing is you're sacrificing your future self for your now you know you're kind of saying oh like no I, fuck it i get takeaway that might feel nice now the minute you finish it, it won't feel great. No. And you'll feel guilty about it. But if you go out for a run, you won't actually feel that hungry afterwards. you probably grab a shower and you feel more awake and you'll be alive with yourself and you'll see the results the next day. I'm not saying never get a takeaway. Like, <laughs> like, it's great to have it. Like, But I do think that, like, we were talking about this area, you know, buying clothes for your future self, you know. And, um, you know, if, if you went out and bought clothes, you know, be that person already almost. You know, go out and buy the medium size or you know the 34 inch you know and like oh, get your mind going it's being that person and then it just manifests almost you know that's what you were saying about there about the rain and all it's, it's and like the world now we live in everybody's too used to getting lifts everywhere and driving everywhere that they don't even know what it's like for a bit of rain to fall on them anymore <laughs> it's true <laughs> but you know the the like the only time they be in a bit of rain sometimes is when they park the job and they have to run like run five meters into the the job like you know but it's um and it's great one of my my if i see it's lashing rain now 
oh, straight away I have me running clothes Would on you? and I'm out the door. <laughs> Fuck's sake, yeah. It's the most it's the most enjoyment it, most enjoying time you can actually go out to run. Yeah. It's when it's lashing rain now. Right, the thought of oh, look at that rain. As soon as you start running and your body starts getting warm, it's so relaxing. Yeah. Like it's absolutely great. And the, knowing you get back mm-hmm. right, that, and you get out of that shower. Yeah. Your whole body feels great. Yeah. But yeah. they're nice warm clothes and you totally warm clothes, you feel great. You know, I I my I've I've heard a few people saying it actually. Yeah, it's yeah. Re- it's so relaxed. Your body feels great after. I don't know if it's a cold rain not hitting on you as well, but it's great. So I haven't I haven't i I'm at the rope on my runs now to four a week in, in the last week and so I am gonna I haven't come across being caught out in lashing rain, so I think it's gonna happen yeah. now and uh, so I'll probably go through what you're talking about. <laughs> one one thing is limiting T V, isn't it? Like lim- one like I I'm not saying don't ever watch T V, but you can get stuck there as well, can't you? You know, if you have five shows that you're following you know, you're going to be stuck to the TV mm-hmm. the whole time. Like, I, I barely watch TV myself, personally, too much. I'm not saying don't watch TV, but what I'm saying is that if you're following five or six shows, you're not going to be have time, you're not going to make time to get out and do it. Like, one, do a thing, one thing I do think is good on TV is the Operation Transformation. And watching a bit of that, mm-hmm. um, the way they get their towns involved and they put out the diets into the Tesco's and Aldi and all, you know, and they uh, I think that's a good thing because you know you see them going to all the different towns and they organise and getting everyone out there and all. I think that's great. Yeah. I love all them myself and the hell weeks and everything and yeah. all like that. You know. Well, actually, if we didn't even touch on this last time really that much, you're wearing your top from Hell Week. You yeah, were recruit you number eight. Yeah. Yeah. Summers, yeah. <laughs> that's what it was known as no, number, eight. number eight. That was it. That's, like, all. that's something that like you loved, isn't it? Like that you were dying to get in there. Oh yeah, and like it's. It's it's mad to other people like I remember the next year came around you were like apply you everyone apply for that if I could apply again I'd be back in there straight away, yeah. but um like That's I know like a part of that maybe is your confidence of being so fit though in a way isn't it like right. it's tougher like if if say if I walked in now I'd be like in bits like <laughs> and I was look it was the best thing ever it was like unbelievably tough as well, um just like I was talking about running in the rain I just love everything outdoor I just you know I love give myself a a challenge like a real you know, that that was a challenge like, but you know I love all that sort of stuff and it's probably because from a young age being in the boxing and always be surrounded by a lot you know a lot of people and that's probably why I gained the confidence that I have yeah you know? yeah because you were super confident <laughs> that way but I know as well you were saying to me before you know if you have been out of training for a while you go back to it and you 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 know, you know, a show fight is on you to beg your trainers put you in against you know, the toughest guys, mm-hmm. and like it was to know where you're at, yeah, exactly. Like, to I've, I've done it, I've often, do you know, when you get stuck in a row, do you know, every it happens to everybody at you know, certain points. And I wouldn't be in a club for say three months, and I walk straight into the club, you know, where I wouldn't be fit at all. Like, you put a good bit of weight on, I walk in and I'd find out the club have a show on. Now, they wouldn't even ask you to go on the show because you're only back, but I'd be straight up to them, okay, will you match me up with somebody, get me on the show? They'd be like, yeah. no, you're only back in training. You know, and I'd just keep at them, keep at them, and they'd match me up, and they'd end up matching me up against, it could be the All-Ireland Champion, or it could be, you know, like uh, somebody who boxed in the European Championships, and, you know, and one thing, and I always done it, I always, yep, yeah, that's it, I'll fight in that, and um, I always done it to kind of teach myself a lesson. You yeah. know, to, to let myself know, look, this is your own fault, this is what happens, you know, yeah, if you don't yeah. go back or, you know, and for me, a wake up call, a wake up call, and it, it, it makes me train even more, you know, it makes you want to get back, you yeah. know, to, to your top fitness again. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So it's, talk, it's, talk about punishing yourself. But, like, was there any times when you went into the Hell Week, you know, they, they stripped you off the first day and you were in the freezing cold and it was raining and it was that cold that you could, or you were obviously, like, some of your exercises was <laughs> yeah. in the snow and all. Like, but were you thinking to yourself at any point, oh, I made a big mistake here, or I'd rather be at home sipping a cup of tea? Not at all. Obviously, it does come into your head. I'd love to be at home now drinking a cup of tea, you know, because I love my tea. But, <laughs> but no, you do. I think at one point we were all talking in the room, and everything, one of us goes, oh, do you know what? I'd love to be, I just love a cup of tea now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's exactly what it is. But it's, um, I think it's, it was mainly they take away your every second, you know? If you're in the room and, and you're sitting down like you can't sit down and relax because you know they're going to run in any second yeah, you know yeah. and if they see you sitting down they just make you get up and do push-ups or like farmer walks around the 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 dorm you know so yeah it's um 
I thought it was great, you know that. I do it, I do it again, and I'm happy. It's funny, like when we're talking about like stuff that really pushes you, like that obviously really pushed you. Like I seen the scratch where they're saying though. Well, yeah. Did you say the difference? That's, with that's see the muck on that. Yeah. That's from the scratch. That's, that's crawling through the tank tracks. And the 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 success rate of people passing that is terrible. That I know. scratch they said like that goes on for hours in the freezing mud. Should they? Should they, I think they're saying that like one year there was there was one year there was n- n- like nobody passed. They just in the real thing, you know. And yeah. Other years two out of twenty eight, and you know that's that's what they, they were at. saying. One thing that was was good that they said that um, you know, the difference between ye and normal recruits to that stage is obviously normal recruits would have gone elite through the mm-hmm. army and that, but a lot of ye were like. Ironman champions are, you know, all Ireland boxers are like you would have been at the top of your game. And they said that the body fat was very low. He said they noticed when they stripped us all off the first day, everyone was like, "Jeez, like you know." Mm-hmm. That's why when they, when they went on and they went through the river, you know, someone got pneumonia you know, because you know this cold obviously hits cold. Hard, the, the less body fat you yeah, have. These were really top athletes. These were super fit, you yeah. know. And it's just one of these things that look if you're, it happens to your body, there's nothing you can do, and that's what happened to them, you know. Yeah, the one one thing I was talking about was like. You know, when people get exercise and they do probably I know some emotions come out um, you often see this in TV shows and that you know when people are trying to get up the hill and they break down and they you know they, they flood and they, they it's like they're not you know they don't think they're worth getting up and, and going through it and a lot of stuff in their past uncovers and all because they never push themselves to that you know that everything's just rising up like from them can you talk about some of the times from boxing where like you, you know people always say you had to have a, I had to have a strong talk with myself when I got around that hill or you know or you know when you were a couple of rounds into a boxing fight did any of that ever occur or you know through your training or anything like that where you really had to like sit to yourself and say well what's the story here or you know pull yourself uh, out yeah of. well what like for me what would happen with the boxing is we'd be in a boxing match and it could be in the second round you know and I, I'd know myself look I'm getting beaten in this fight, you know, and then straight away, what go through my head, you'd start thinking about everything you put your through, put your, yourself through for this competition. You just start thinking about everything you had, all the training you done, the diet you went on, you know, all the things you sacrificed. You know, you wouldn't have went out socializing that all. You you were just basically got into your little cocoon doing your training and 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 diet and and you know, you couldn't talk to yourself. Are you really going to, you know, like, not give up now, but you're really going to just keep going the way you are? This is in the ring, you know? For me, it kind of, a lot of the times in the fights, it actually made me do do a bit better, actually, you know, coming on to the later rounds. And um, I think it's good to talk to yourself as well, you know? Cause sometimes you can, you can kind of just get kind of not lazy in the ring but you just accept things how they are you know but if you if you think in your head all the stuff and how far you came you know you can you can kind of push that extra bit more yeah yeah you now it's interesting because you like people do you, you do find where running maybe or if you're more so in a competition level you often hear about people having to talk to themselves have to have a serious chat with, you know like i've heard it i did sugarloaf mountain earlier like like a few weeks ago or a few probably about a month ago or so and I was at the back of the hill and you know it was severe getting trying to climb up it <laughs> and it was really like can I do this or not you know and I, and I said well, what are you going to do you're going to stay out here and, you know on the far side of the mountain well you know you're here now that's it and it was rain it was cold it was windy it was like a storm I know it's a storm every fucking weekend now but um we just had to slog up it and it just kept going on and on and every time we turned it was on and it was 500 meters in total and <laughs> I like I'm still new to 10k isn't it alone on a mountain run you know and these are like top athletes runners as well and my friend was well gone and I knew by looking at my watch that he was finished you know <laughs> and uh, I was like am I last I don't know like and did you did you struggle that bad like I did struggle was it, yeah. was, uh, it like, was a horrible training like, with that it was horrendous yeah did you, but, did you cry no a lot of people do cry yeah yeah like, when they're you know if they're at that point where they're struggling to bits and yeah. they know that they <laughs> That they want to finish it and they're going to finish it but you know they just find it so hard that it, just all the emotions come out and they start to cry yeah game. no you do that's what i'm saying yeah. like that that does people like hurl up a lot mm-hmm. of shit it's like they regurgitate it or something and um no but i i i did see i could look around and see other people struggling as well and that's not so bad then you know like you're like well, we're all struggling here you know let's let's sort it out um 
and if they if he's pushing up i'm gonna push up and like you know as long as i'm gonna stick i can see that person and i'm gonna stick you know you, you often do that when you're racing or you're doing something like that you see something you point something yeah. out it might be like they're wearing a particularly yeah, orange top or, or some kind of you know headband on them or something like that. like gonna focus on that and make sure that doesn't go out on your side and you know you stick to that then but um it's funny how your mind works like that almost <laughs> you know but um no we got like it, it wasn't like that like i climbed over it and i think we were waiting 40 minutes for one of the lads to come in and there's people still coming like you know so i wasn't as bad as i thought i was you know i wasn't that far back but there's plenty in ahead of me as well but um yeah no i i do think that like that you know sometimes people have been prepared for that if they do get into exercise that you might have that fight or flight thing where you have to fight through it and then when you're over it you're there and you break it and it's like a therapy almost it's like exercise therapy almost in a way but it is just something that people might have to contend with you know um and we did say like about you know you, you know comfy runners if you're getting going or eat less but don't starve yourself just eat better really isn't it um, and there's there's core exercise you can do at home. We were talking about like people don't want to go to the gym, but they want to build up some, like you know, build the fitness, and they want to build the base, they want to build a level of strength as well. Um, like dips or push ups. I know push ups can be hard for people, but if you do it up on the stairs, or if, look if somebody's really bad, they can do it on their knees just so they build up the strength in their arms as well. You know. Yeah, you were saying about you know you can even do it on a seated. You know, it's not, it's like a sit up almost seated, isn't it? It's like there's ways. Well, it's, it's just. As well, like if if somebody, you know, uh, any sort of mobility problems, as well, if if you sit at the edge of a, a sofa or some sort of a chair, if you sit at the edge straight away, your core and all's engaged. You know, yeah. you notice if you sit back, yeah, you, right, you can feel the difference. It's no good. You don't feel anything walking at all. But if you sit uh, at the edge, you know, mm-hmm. and just keep your body straight, you know, your whole. You can actually feel the exercises walking that you can actually do. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, you can nearly do a lot of the same exercises as you can like, you know, standing up, you can run on the you can kind of move your legs on the spot as if you're running while you're sitting down at the edge. You should try it. And you, when you see you, you can actually feel, you know, each exercise and it's probably you were saying, put your hands behind your head and you're you're basically bringing your elbows and your head to your knees as you're sitting at the edge yeah 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 when you feel that you can actually feel that walk in your stomach and the end of your back as well you know so and look if you had two hand weights you know in your hands um look that's more load load exercise you can do sitting at the edge and then you've had just ankle weights for your your legs for mm-hmm. when you're sitting down you know you can you can do a whole body workout sitting at the edge of your your seat if you want yeah you can do a whole body workout from from your sitting room can't you yeah, like you know you like you can run on the spot you could even there's small things there's a superman stretch where people lie down flat and like their head down and their arms flat out above their head and they just lift their arms and their legs a bit and that that engages their core mm-hmm. and, and starts yeah. to build the core and the core is so vital for running and you know walking if you're getting into that for everything really you know put planks you know side planks or uh, dips off a chair you know you know you don't have to go from that high you know you, you know they're all good ways of starting but um that's why i think as well not overdoing things in terms of uh, what i did was like re- worst at everything and it can it can lead to chronic fatigue and put you pull you way back and make you start all over again i think you know that's why i would say that it can affect your sleep so get try get your max heart rate easy to do 220 minus your age so roughly your max heart rate and um, get it maybe get a little heart monitor like i i have i have a watch there right and i know it's that that's a, that's the apple watch i have the heart rate actually monitor is not great on that okay. that's that's truthful like i wouldn't tell everyone go out and get that i i'd say to you like like you said to me the other day like i might think of getting one like because i was doing heart rate zones and you said yeah what one would i get and i said well, what's your phone and really it's just like you know whatever communicates better with your phone yeah. like they're all more or less the same you don't have to spend a load of money the heart rate monitor i found not very good on this and that that there is like a kusbu one it's like 20 quid like some chinese company it pairs with the watch goes up on your arm here and it gives you a way more cr- did you know it was a much of a difference with that one to that well, yeah like it, it, it like it adds to it so it pairs mm-hmm. to it but that that the heart monitor turns off there and it uses this the heart monitor okay and it's way clearer okay. and it's way more like but now it, it, it's pulling from a, somewhere that's yeah. better uh, but it's better than a chest strap because they yeah. can be very uncomfortable and that just slides on slide off um but like i do think that it's important to i think strava is great for that because i can see my zones my heart rate zones and i'm sure other apps do it but it is important too you know if you want to go go walk and you know you get a walk and heart rate 
look at it and you'll you can see your gains it'll give you confidence when it drops a bit you know if you go for a little jog your pace might increase and your heart rate will drop a bit to getting fitter to getting faster you're getting stronger and that'll all build your confidence overall you know no that's it and look the amount of stuff you can do at home like you were saying sit-ups planks push-ups yeah you know run on the spot skipping like if you can get yourself used to skipping yeah. try having a look practice makes perfect won't you if you keep doing all the time you, you'll finally get used to you know that's a great one isn't it yeah it's really good you know um everything like so run on the spot if you can do all your jumping jacks and you know like do 20 minutes of you know all different types of knees up uh you know heels up all that types of run on the spot um with your push-ups sit-ups like all your own body weight exercises body weight be, exercise, probably, yeah. the, probably the best thing you can do body, body weight, weight exercises absolutely yeah yeah and um, there's loads you can find them online so easy yeah. can't you it's simple and it, it graduates you to if you're worried about going to a gym and all that at least you know you can lift you know you can lift your own body weight you know you you're doing all right that whole thing as well of going to a gym and being worried about someone looking at you like i couldn't tell you what anybody lifts to i've ever like you know like the, the, the guys sit beside you on benches and like yeah you probably get some guys trying to lift everything or like that but like i have my earphones on i don't who, like who are they i don't know who they are i don't know what they lift it's, i don't you know like i'm there specifically to do whatever i do and i haven't gone to the gym in a long time since i broke my shoulder i haven't gone to the gym really and i probably will bring it back i'm not saying it's not good i'll bring it back maybe once a week and do some core uh, not core exercise. well I'll do a bit of core but do the fundamental do you know just three fundamental movements we're talking about it's the deadlift the squat and the bench and like they, you know, they cover most of your your body, body yeah. and that, that's what Olympic weightlifting is. They're just damn three things, and you can do them. And if you, there's good ways. Like if people have bad knees, you can do a front squat instead. It takes the pressure off your knees. Or you know, there's you know, you can do lighter weights and more reps, and you can do explosive ones. Like you you taught me years ago. You know, it's like how a boxer trains almost. You, you explode with, yeah. the, with the weights almost. You know, that also leads into plyometrics from running. <laughs> you know, if you're if you are getting comfortable at your 5k runs you could add in a bit of plyometric which is something you were talking to me about and we went out today to do a bit of plyometric work and you were just showing me what your routine is but um oh, it's tough no? <laughs> it's tough enough it's every day there things like that you can cooperate even two three times three days a week mm-hmm. you've seen the plyometrics and the the sprints the explosive sprints and stuff oh, like yeah. that you know it's so t- tell me what's what's the advantage of plyometrics what is it doing well, basically what plyometrics do, you know, it's working your fast twitch muscle fibers. Okay. So it's going to enable your body to explode more. You know, it's it's uh, giving you like it's power. giving you power, more strength. Mm. You know, it's so it's like a type of force. You know, it's so when your your muscles contract from you doing plyometrics, it's enabling your your muscles to you know to fl- to flex out. You know, it's giving you like more strength, more push basically. Um, a good example would be. A sprinter's main exercise is plyometrics mm-hmm. and sprints. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right? If you look at any sprinter, they're probably in the best shape you'd nearly ever see anybody in. Um, and that's because they're building all... You can actually... Right, your body has a certain amount of slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. That's right, yeah. By doing plyometrics and sprints, you can actually gain on the fast twitch muscle fibers. Okay. They say you can actually build up on them in right. a small yeah. bit of fast twitch, you know. But I've always said that if you look at sprinters how like do you know how good they look their you know their legs their arms their body how mm-hmm. how thick lean and, and lean they yeah. look you know and that's that's basically from the plyometrics and that's the reason why they do that is obviously to push off the starting blocks and to, to basically push them mm-hmm. themselves as fast as they can uh, the same as the boxers the plyometrics go for the boxers even the, the rugby players they rugby get players. They're pushing against you can hear them talk every, every single one of them would have plyometrics in their training because it's going to give you more explosive power yeah yeah and it, it is and i tell you like even to talk about talking about some stuff you, your routine that you've added into your routine and i know you're getting back fit now where you were heavy not that like a month ago up until like and then you're adding these back in every day and the the, the, the actual actually we walked through some of the exercises that we were doing yeah. that anyone can do like what we went is we jogged up to a set of steps yeah and then um, what you did firstly run, run me through what do we do first the first thing we done was just basically fast feet up oh, the yes. steps so you know you'd be starting off say, say if i set off my rifle and two feet would be touching each step mm-hmm. as fast as you can up and then when i got the next set of steps i just change the leading foot so yeah. again it's just walking your basically your mind with your body yeah uh, fast feet up the steps it's basically just walks your agility and um, your 
coordination speed you know speed. speed obviously as well you know so and it actually is harder than it looks because i was really it. Hard. i did it after you and i was looking at you doing it i was like that looks handy you know yeah, not, not yeah. that looks handy but it looks easy enough mm. then i did it and i was all over the place yeah. and i surprised myself anybody I hurt myself actually yeah yeah <laughs> anybody i've ever had down here like and um, we've all thought the same that looks easy but once no. he done one they, they were killed over you know it's, yeah. it's really hard it's a look i said to you earlier it's a different type of tiredness yeah you know i said i was more tired doing that than i was doing the, your uh, stomach and everything like, run, like, you like you know it's you're, you're, all, like, so well, you're in the red zone for the whole lot of it yeah you know yeah. it goes from not to red yeah. yeah and then the next thing we done then was the uh, explosive explosive jumps you know oh, yes, yeah. um again that's that's absolutely great for walking your whole body it's walking your your whole quads your glutes it's walking uh like your calves, your whole legs every your single leg well. your core your like every time after doing that and i wake up my stomach does be killing me mm-hmm. how well it's walking your stomach you know yeah yeah but, but it's when you think about it, it's actually making your whole body stronger yeah yeah we were saying it's and, it's, you, and you moved on to that to single legs version because yeah. you were talking about you know as a boxer you know you were leaning you know you when you throw a shot you obviously you, you're on one leg or you're throwing into yeah you're torn your legs into it you're, so you're just again you're getting your mind to work do you know with your leg leg so it, it's so when you when your body wants to do something you know you're getting your mind to basically walk with your leg to put, put as much power into it as you can yeah, and, yeah. no matter what you're doing you know and then the other thing that we done then was the plyometrics which is the clap uh, push ups, yeah, so to walk your upper body, you know, yeah, yeah, um, which looked tough. And we also did one, um, just back and forth on the step. Oh, yeah, it's, again, that's mainly for your agility and coordination, yeah, you know, yeah, um, but it's a uh, as well for the, the push ups and um, the clap push ups, walking your upper body as well. If you're doing pull ups or chin ups, you come up as fast as you can and you let your hands come off the bar and catch it again. That's plyometrics, okay. they're all for your upper body, um. You if did. you were to do the wheel, if you were to hold my legs, the wheelbarrow, you know, yeah, all stuff like that. So. You're doing the shadow boxing then as well. That's obviously just part of your personalized pr- routine because obviously that's what you do. Sports well, specific. Yeah, you have this. I have to still build the speed and, and fitness in my arms as well. You know, because it's um, you know yourself or anybody knows to whoever's done a bag even for a few seconds. Oh, how tired you get? You it's get, it's like anything. You know, if I haven't done it in a while, you still have to build back up on it yeah and it's the same as that like you go into the red zone very yeah, quickly yeah, and you have to stay in it and then you go back out of it and then you go back into it and um, i know you do sets of that plyometrics which you know it's i definitely i'm going to incorporate my routine um we start off with a set or two first and then try and build into it because it does it, it's it's a kind of shocker to the body straight away isn't it it's kind of you, you wouldn't think it looking almost really <laughs> know, yeah. hope, but even them jumps when you land and you get into the squat position and you're, you're lifting from your upper body back into another three or four steps up like and it's your whole body it's from your toes to your yeah. head going you know well not but, your toe anymore yeah <laughs> my toes bursted yeah. off that um the um as well and then afterwards then i finish off with the few hills yeah oh yes Should they say yeah. run they say running up a hill you're walking the same a lot of the same muscles as you would be in sprints mm-hmm say as well you know so. yeah yeah it's power as well isn't it you're yeah. lifting your whole body and you know you always hear a good ro- running routine is kind of aerobic which is building your base slower and then intervals which is like your know, sprints pole to pole almost or sprinting and walking and sprinting and you were talking you, you we obviously did the, the yeah. sprints as well and the explosive just and you did them on a hill on an incline because why, why did you do it on an incline? Yeah, I, I just don't incline because you know it's it's harder to get an injury then if you know it so it's um if you're running flat you see it, if you're sprinting you're kind of you're putting more force on your on your joints and your your muscles uh, it's easier to slip you know when you're running up a up on an incline you just just you, you can feel it you can feel it when you're doing it. obviously you have to push a bit more because you're going up the hill but you feel less pressure on your legs um it's like for hill running running on grass and hill run if you if if you have any injuries of you if you don't want to get injured you're you're better off running you know downhill running you know it's you get less injuries from it but it's um it's downhill that you want to watch that's where you get most in, injuries so you just run down them as slow as you can you know but yeah i was saying one of the lads came out with us running who has you know from injuries from football and soccer and all the sports and i think it's downhills that took out his knees yeah. you know 
That's see, a shout out to Vinny. See, it's, the hill run's great. Back there, I was saying to you earlier, for that, when I done that run, that long run, um, for the Irish Mountain Run Association, there, the, um, one of the things I done was, I started running every day with, i get a rabbit now and give you a look. Oh yeah. There with that. Just the weighted vest. Yeah. What weight is that vest? That one there is just, that's 10 kg. Okay. 10 kg. And what I was doing was, I'd run with that, and um, I'd just do 10 k. Mm -hmm. 10 k up the hills. The hills I do was the magazine hills in the Phoenix Park. I know it's not, they're not mountains or anything like it, but I just do laps like that till I got to 10 k. I was yeah. doing that every day. And that worked like really good for me. Like I done a ten K and whatever it was forty one minutes and uh, forty one minutes, fifty seconds or whatever it was. Yeah. And then I done the the mountain run. And that was from just training but that. Mm -hmm. Now I wouldn't recommend running on that on like road run or anything like it, but yeah. uh, for the likes of running on grass mm -hmm. and if you're running up hills, you know, and you're it's just keeping that a nice kind of relaxed pace. I guess it's, then it's once you take it off, then the next time you fly it. Like, well look, it worked for me. Yeah. Like oh, I felt a great benefit from me, you know. For the Ballyhara when you were training for that. Training for it. A lot of people say, Oh, anything weighted, but I think if you're doing it in the right places, you know, and yeah. like you're basically smart about it, it can benefit you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that like you know we are talking about the, the weighted ones as well that is like advancing the run and advancing the hill runs and, and bring it up another stretch as well and um, do you find that like you know as when you're doing the hell week you're obviously carrying a lot of weight as well so like that would have been hopefully you would have probably like geez this is actually not too bad compared yeah. to i'm well used to this what did you feel a bit like that yeah, it was because I was I was I was actually you know, training for that was a different kind of story. You know, you the type of training you were doing you wouldn't kind of do because you, it's probably what I wouldn't say it's good for you. But I was going and runs with that on and a bag on top of it. Yeah, you know, with loads of weights in it as well. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, you know, it was look, it definitely benefited benefited me. But um, unfortunately. As you know, I had a bit of bad luck. <laughs> yeah, I well, I don't know if you want to talk about that, your your injury. Yeah. Yeah, well, I remember you, you actually text me. Oh, you don't mind me saying this, then, do you? No. Um, but if you, you did a big run. What was the run you did? Like, I remember seeing on Strava, it was 30-odd uh, K, 28K or something it was, like that. Yeah, it was uh, 28, nearly 28 it was. And uh, you text me saying, you won't believe this. You, t you, you were going on the show. <coughs> you said, you know... You won't believe this is it uh, it's just a week of it <coughs> you're saying that um i'm after tearing like what did you say about your calf or something like that me calf yeah and the, then i said well, what are you gonna do and i knew you were really excited about this you know hell week <laughs> and uh then all of a sudden you went on it and i was like fucking hell like you know jay like how was he gonna do and i remember the day that it was the third day and uh they were at the start in wicklow and uh it was saying recruit number eight it's not having a great because <laughs> yeah. straight away off the mark you fell into like a puddle and uh you know just straight away like it wasn't you know i i knew myself looking at because i knew the story at that stage and yeah. i was like Fuck, like you know and then uh, i could see you sitting in the car and you're like no oh, just you know that's it like and your mom was like some people's 100 percent are different you know and i was sitting there like he's not even out of breath like he's just yeah. like, you know it's for it's yeah. mad like you know but yeah no but that's that's just me look i just I never really, I just leave things the way they are and I don't just bother saying anything about them, but... Um, Could you hate when people come on and give excuses and that, don't you? Like, yeah, that, that always, was the reason why. Sorry, That's one of the reasons why I just didn't even say anything to them about it, you know? Yeah. But, look, as well, obviously people in my house knew I was going on to the show, like, you know, and uh, they were saying, oh, don't, like, you're mad going on with that injury, you know? Yeah. He thinks, but that's always the way it was. I, I've always still done things with my injuries and... Because the way I said it is, look, I'll do it, and however good I can do, that that's great. I'll be happy with that. As well, the reason why I think that's as well, it's because I don't care. I never cared what anybody else thinks, and mm -hmm. that's always the way I was. So I went down and said, look, I'll go on, and like, it's not looking good for me, but like, I'll just do as good as I can. Yeah. And um, I don't care. Look. And you're friends with all them now, still, aren't you? Like, yeah, yeah. I talk to them all the time. The twenty-four, probably. 
24 nicest people you can meet, like, you know, to yeah, every yeah. single one of them. I suppose know? when you go through that, it's like Quinn Tom at the army, like, you know, you go through the hardship together, like, you kind of, yeah. it's probably like all your boxing mates that you all do the training it's with, it. the same club mentality, football clubs probably mm-hmm. feel the same way, it's the camaraderie of it, or, or you know, especially like, when there's an authority like that, when them lads came in, were throwing balaclavas on you, and, <laughs> and like, throwing you into whatever, you know, it, it looks around, it's like, even watching it, you know, it's intriguing to watch, like, you're like, jeez, you know, but like, I don't know how well I could do with people screaming in my face, you know, like, <laughs> it's, it's tough. Yeah, but you just, you just have to know it's yeah, a game. that's you know, the thing, you're there, and you know where you're there, you yeah. put yourself there, and you just, you just go through it, like, can, obviously you can leave <laughs> if you really want to, it's not like, it's, a, it's like the army to pay out of it, or like that, or, but you know, but, um, to, you know, one thing you come across this, and my, a good bit, I don't know if you come across it, I get this a good bit, um, a friend, my colleague in work here, me and him, he's, big into cycling and he's getting quite athletic at now he's a great runner as well he, he'd leave me for dust but um he's more so going towards the cycling and the things and he's getting better and better really good like um he got me into the cycling really and um we'd be talking about diets and uh, what we'd be doing what we'd be eating and you know he'd be like you know i think i'm eating too much and you hear other people kind of be chiming in a bit saying oh you are mad like you know you, i'm just gonna enjoy life like i don't know what you're thinking starving yourself and all this kind of thing like we're not starving ourselves. Obviously, we're eating just the good things, and we're thinking about it an awful lot more. Some people say you're thinking about it too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, why bother exercising and all this? You, know, you ever get come across people like that? Like you're not enjoying life enough all the time. You know, they think just because you're not going out to the pub, yeah, you're not enjoying life. Obviously, why is going out to the pub drinking? Why is that enjoying life? I just never. I don't get it. Yeah, you know, for me, they say if they go out to the pub and enjoy themselves, that's what they want. That's what they do to enjoy themselves. For me going out on a run, doing training, you know, competing, signing myself up for all different types of runs, competing and all different types of stuff. That's how I enjoy myself. Yeah, I know, yeah. And you obviously feel better with it. I, feel like better. I do get the social aspect of it. Yeah. Um, like, like, you go into the pub, it's, like it's, it's great seeing your mates and all that. Like, it's terrible that we don't do stuff outside that. Like, I'd love to be go on a hike with a lot of yeah. mates, you know, on the weekend, like, and they're never around or whatever, like that. Like, But you can always, one big thing about this whole thing is that you have to make time for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, and I remember your uncle told me this years ago when he was cycling and running, and he said, you have to be a bit selfish with your time. And you do because you just have to say, right, you can do it in your, in your weekday. It's easy to do. You can do it in your lunch break and work. I do my runs on my lunch break and work during the week. Um, but then section a, like an hour or two on the weekend to just get a run in or get a cycle in or get your gym session in or get in, whatever you have to do. It's more important than watching an hour of TV or doing scrolling on your phone or, or on your laptop or whatever, isn't it? Like, it's it's essential. Like, people are thinking, like, oh, these guys are into fitness, so it's different for them. Like, the human body scientifically needs exercise at least 30 minutes a day. Like, we're forgetting about that. Like, we're thinking that these people are just excessive, you know, with their exercise and all that. Like, I don't do 30 minutes a day, but I'll probably do maybe I'll do 40 minutes tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and I'll, I'll eat actively, and then yeah. two days later I'll do 40 minutes, I, I'm still not doing 30 minutes a day, and you obviously would hit that quota a lot more, but you don't need to do 30 minutes a day, no, but you no. need to put aside three to four times a week, or even twice a week if you're starting out with good diet, that's what we're saying, like you need to put in time, even if it's prepping food in the beginning, or going out for that hour long walk, whatever it is, you need to make time for yourself, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, like another thing, even with your, with your partner, you know, even little things like if they want you to sit down and you know watch a program with them or it's this program's on. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, you have to be selfish. Y- yes. <laughs> what do I want to do? Like, uh, what's more important? Just sitting down watching, you know, like a program, or I can go out now and get me the hour run in. Yeah. You have to be selfish with things like that. Yeah. You, you can't. You can't. One of the worst things is listen to people close to you they yeah as, and they, as they, well they say like you know surround yourself with people who want the best for you or you know if someone's constantly saying to you well i don't what are you doing like and all like like back away from that person for yeah. a while they don't want your best intent they don't want the best for you really you know like they, they just know that they're feeling bad about themselves because they're not doing something mm-hmm. and they want to bring you down to the same level as them and that's that's a truth and you yeah. know the train time the truth side of things is like you know at the end of the day, like, you know, you're, like, why, why like, you, you're, you, first of all, you're prolonging your life, you know, like, I hear people talking about smoking as if it's my choice and I'm paying my tax for it and all that, yeah, but the selfish side of it is that you're, 
it's not just your decision because you're robbing people of a mother or a father or a family member a lot sooner than they should be robbed yeah. of them you know and they don't see that side of things it's like you know that's not just your decision to you know same as eating shit food all the time or going out drinking every night or you know not looking after yourself and on top of that you're an influence for your kids you're an influence for your friends almost you know if your friends see you looking way better feeling way better they see you glowing with like health you know like you know what are you doing i'll tell you what i'm doing what i'm doing you should try it you know they're not fucking as long as they're not like you said running down the canals yeah, you know yeah, yeah. And, and just doing it for show you know people people are doing it genuinely for their own health yeah. and people like i'm happy that kyron knows my kid knows that i'm i'm going out and running he knows and i'd say to him you know, it's important to eat and he asks for sweets now and again he's a kid you know they yeah. all do so yeah you just remember like sweets are okay now and again but the important thing is the dinner and you know is eating your good food and you know that'll make you better make you strong and healthy keep you running and i like getting out for him with a little jog sometimes as well and just yeah. getting him into that mentality like you know that they can where he starts enjoying it you know you probably see that with your kid oh, i do yeah he's sure I, like what you said i would bring him out in a little when i mean a jog i'd bring him on 500 meters up the road and yeah. jog him beside me and i would yeah, bring yeah. him out playing football i'd have him shadow boxing in the house he's only five you know and another thing i'd bring him out on long walks in the park you know what i say if i brought him to I look you know me I do it every year I bring him looking for animals you know yeah, looking, yeah. especially when the board's in this and they've shown the this I'll be bringing out looking for frogs he's going out getting exercise yeah. you know and he's he's doing things that kids should be still doing these days yeah. you know going out it's so look that's a big difference isn't it like the, the things where I was trying to think through the day there's not the same community as well you know with, with kids running around like we when we were Kyron's six now when I was six, I was trying to think the other day, he loves Lego, he's big into Lego, and we love that because he's real creative and he's putting stuff together and he's drawing stuff. He has a real crea- like creative eye on him. He does basketball on the weekends. He's in the Carlo Basketball Club, so that's good as well. And then if I got a little jog with him during the week, which is great again, he's looking at, like, so then he's, you know, you're already the goal influence, Bryn, making sure you get up in the morning and bring him to that and things. But, um, so, like, in terms of, like, what I always say to him is that, you know he he was thinking to myself the other day he loves lego he's six was i playing with lego when i was six no i was i was playing outside the whole time i was a lot of my friends were all on their bikes and you know we're doing like going to fields and all this like or whatever you know and but but at the same time you know there's not that many kids in his yeah. day and you know it's probably better i'm hurry my memory is more thinking of summertime as well so i probably was playing with certain things but kids definitely are more indoors and that's why i try to limit his tv time and, and things like that because that's you know much more bigger thing now isn't it like i'm glad if i go to the barbers current's not sitting there stuck on a phone he loves to bring a couple of toys with him and like i'm glad that way you know like that he's not you know because you see that all too often like you know but could be different if if you allow them from the start sitting down on like on computers or phones or things like that yeah. you know th- that's the way he'd be he loves so it's, it's yeah. because of, it's because of his parents why he's not going that way yeah and he loves reading and stuff like that yeah. so we make sure at night time before he goes to bed we read a page and he reads a page yeah so but then yeah. like it obviously for, so why bother exercising one big thing is it prolonging your life as well um, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a big health thing isn't it you feel healthier you're prolonging your own life you're there more for your kids as well you're enjoying your life that enjoying more. your life you're you know it's enabling to do things easier relieving stress before relieving, relieving stress running around with your kids being able to play with them without getting tired you know he's looking at you looking at you knowing that you know you're looking at you being able to run being able to play football with him yeah um it wouldn't be nice for him really looking at you <coughs> not being able to run and you know keeling over and coughing all over the place and you know watch a big thing with this as well is like the main message as well and this is like to move to eat well don't 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 have to diet it's not dieting it's you're changing your your eating routine isn't it it's your you're seeing food food as fuel you're sleeping well and um like that's that's the truth of it really isn't it like yeah that's that's it all in a nutshell basically what you said there yeah and as well i was saying about why i add faith to these side of things right because I had trained thought through, a lot of people would probably think to themselves, why is he bringing that into it? But the reason I bring it into it, like there is a lot of studies to say 
that faith is your spiritual health as a like you know i'll go through right there's a study i just briefly looked up one today because obviously i've had this talk for the last year that the faith was a big thing i felt it you know looking after my, my mental health which is getting me out and motivating me to look after my physical health and i have much more appreciation for life and all these things there's a study michigan state university published a paper recently it was on the faith and health connection so um a couple of findings you read it real quick to see why the the spiritual and faith aspect i link to the mental and physical so dr harold koenig i think from duke university medical center and um, was reviewed research articles on religion spirituality and health some of its findings so those who reported being religious or spiritual were less likely to report depression suicidal thoughts or attempts anxiety and substance abuse which is fairly like a good substantial another finding um, spirituality or, or religiosity was positively associated more physical activity healthier diets and participants uh, there was a decline in smoking risky sexual behaviors which i guess is like sleeping around and yeah. stuff like that um, and involvement in religion and spirituality went up as involvement went up uh, religion spirituality had a positive impact on prognosis and biological risk factors a lower case of cancer or a better cancer prognosis was found in those who were religious or spiritual over 75 percent of the studies examined the effects of religion and spirituality on mortality found a positive effect on longevity so people are living longer who are more spiritual the decisions to be religious or spiritual is a personal one and that decision is made based on many factors most likely we do not make the choices due to its effect on our health however the research has shown that the religion spirituality is another factor that impacts our overall health and i think that like like they're even big things to say like they even say that prayer helps when you're going for surgeries there's statistics and data on that one thing i was looking up today is like the near-death experiences and i spoke briefly on that on a different one they're the, they're so high that like the doctors are saying one in four people now who are or go critical have a near-death experience and they're all like the same kind of things there's so much data compiled they said they just can't ignore that there's a spiritual element to health you know that there's something else going on there because if people were dying and just dreaming about things it'd be like static on a tv screen it would make no sense because their chemicals and bodies are shutting down but they're reporting you know seeing loved ones and uh, you know I was, I was watching a ted talk and this guy you know he's a doctor all his life and then um, he was saying that you know i think tim inside now he's gonna have a little bit longer we give him a few more fluids and iv and he last few more weeks and he said the team will, will pass in the next 24 hours his nurse told him he says hey, like where are you getting that from he says he's talking about dead relatives and, and seeing them and she was like and he was like you know yeah well she said i don't remember that in my you know biological class and he, they're like there's a lot of stuff you have to realize about you know that a lot of doctors learn over time <clears throat> that apparently they see dead relatives like like 85 percent of them the, the day before they die and all like they start seeing them and all like and it's crazy like yeah, and that, they, that sends shivers up me spine you know, i know it. yeah but like yeah. there is massive like things uh, you know well, you, statistics you, i just don't understand how things like that you're just have to tell me as well how you don't see more about it you know hmm. like you don't see it ever being any type of like news article things so well, you you, you, like what's on the news these days you know hmm. like like you that. think you think something like that would be you know you oh, yeah but like people always push it off as well like if if you know the, you find what you look for in another way as mm. well don't you like like i i put up i put up nde on youtube that's how i came across it and it was ted talks <clears throat> and usually they're the, the highest credited scientists and researchers come into it so i was interested in that and then when this surgeon who had all these claims like was talking and he's bringing up these studies now that's why that's how i found it I, it's something i'm interested in because i believe that there's more to to life than just just the physicality side of things and we know that from you know that like i often look so neurological things and cosmological cosmological things and you know how we're talking conversing now is much more you know, the conscious mind is so unexplained and you know we're not just making sounds like we're like i'm taking in everything you're saying i am processing it and combined with my you know emotions or experiences i am manifesting in my responses and you know there's the connection is there you know and it's like completely like unexplained how people dream and, and everything you know yeah. but um i suppose one big thing the spiritual thing is knowing your worth and I, that's why i think i've linked it into this talk because if you know 
that you're worth more than just a blob of cells at the end of the day you're gonna make more time for yourself to get out and do more stuff you know isn't that the bottom line really yeah no like definitely is look you, you know you're as good as anybody yeah you know just not nobody's different really we're all yeah everybody's human like we're all all men are created equal <laughs> as they say you know um no i think and it gives you an appreciation yeah. for life and health i think you know and uh we like the big thing as well like we all have struggles we all have like with this we all have different injuries we all have specific goals we all have different ways we want to see ourselves and ideas and we want to get to certain pinnacles but like it is great that you know we're all a group of friends who would have been out drinking the whole time and now we're helping each other out with like things like you know i know like i can't really help you out with stuff but like you know people are you know we're, we're in a community we're all doing our runs we're all giving each other their likes we're all saying did you try this you know this is a great diet or this routine is, is great incorporate this and it's like you know you're helping other people selflessly you know like you just want other people to do better mm-hmm. you know and, and that's you know that's really what this talk is about it's 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 not for people who are like trying to get their personal best so they might take something from it but it's also more importantly for people who might be depressed or people who might be at home are stuck on a road and think that they have flooded their mind with this injury or this weight and it's become bigger than what it actually is and everyone can get up and start walking yeah you know or can get up and do something you know That's it. everybody everybody can do it yeah you know you you have to start somewhere yeah and you can start somewhere wherever that may be um you start off slow and look you you will get there in the end you will see results yeah. you know um as well look we just had this video with you of if anybody needs help as an answer as how to do it yeah do you know where, where to contact me yeah no that's true and i put i put like i'll pull up your link as well and as well like people feel free to message the my well, own train thought and truth on instagram wherever that and if you have a question for noel as well he can answer through that Did form. You say, yeah ask you yeah, yeah ask me and i can come back to you within a few hours and yeah. i'll let you know exactly answers for it especially if you want to get into the side of boxing or you want tips on plyometrics like it's a you know it's a free source there of information and you obviously have a wealth of it 18 years of it and to an elite level so and i think but geez, i think we covered it all there yeah. really, didn't we that's it i think well, look, thanks very much now for coming on thanks, again Anthony. and i appreciate it nice yeah. one. Good play. oh you're messing with the mics oh, <laughs>